Once there was a man who dared God to speak. Burn the bush like you did for Moses, God, and I will follow. Collapse the walls like you did for Joshua, God, and I will fight. Still the waves like you did on Galilee, God, and I will listen. And so the man sat by a bush, near a wall, close to the sea, and waited for God to speak. And God heard the man, so God answered. He sent fire, not for a bush, but for a church. He brought down a wall, not of brick, but of sin. He stilled a storm, not of the sea, but of a soul. And God waited for the man to respond. He waited, and he waited, and he waited. But because the man was looking at the bushes, not hearts, bricks, not lives, seas, and not souls, he decided that God had done nothing. Finally, he looked to God and asked, have you lost your power? And God looked at him and said, Have you lost your hearing? This is one of many segments of Max Licardo's Let the Journey Begin, where Max explores the burden of understanding God's power. We want God to prove that we should fight for him, yet we don't see what he does. The man in Max Licardo's story places very specific guidelines on how he is going to trust God. As a result, he completely miscalculates the actions God is taking. In our case, if we limit our prayers to, Dear God, if you are a loving, omnipotent God, please make Boris kind enough to avert the cost of living crisis. I might even become loving like you are as a result. Amen. What we do is we forget that God is kind enough to create Sir Keir Starmer and 140 or so Tory MPs who voted for having a less criminal Prime Minister. I mean, even if you can interpret the kindness differently, God's love is far wider than politics anyway. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, thus says Psalm 36. If we want to be loving on the condition that God is, we need to widen the bracket and our scope for understanding ways in which God acts. We cannot look merely at Moses, Joshua, and Galilee. There is also a matter of God in an evil world. As J.L. Mackey once said, the problem is this, God is omnipotent, God is wholly good, and yet evil exists. There seems to be some contradiction between these three propositions, so that if any two of them were True, the third would be false. Syria, North Korea, Eastern Europe, Africa. I name these countries and you immediately recall troubles that prove that this world is not the most loving. We Christians feel Eli as Elijah felt in 1 Kings 19. I alone am left. Which reflects Mackey's inconsistent triad. How can almighty, all-loving God exist in such an unloving world when most people seem to be evil? Well, what Mackie assumes is, quote, that good is opposed to evil in such a way that a good thing always eliminates evil as far as it can, and there are no limits to what an omnipotent thing can do. Whilst there are no limits to God's power, good and evil are not like water and fire, for you cannot merely use good to put out the flames of evil. I'm not saying they aren't opposites. I'm saying that God being omnibenevolent and omnipotent should not intrinsically cast the end of all evil. God's love doesn't immediately win. God's love works on a process. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 God loved the world, he gave his Son, people believe, they may no longer perish. Whilst Mackey's logic may say that God could get rid of evil in a heartbeat, that's not what the Gospel of John has in mind. God is most powerful, not necessarily most immediate. Perhaps God does not want us to, uh, to just remove all crime by a single statement. 
but instead give us the opportunity to learn. Whatever God's motive may be, we can be sure that evil itself doesn't mean that God doesn't love us. Because God just has many ways at his disposal of dealing with evil. How can we, we be still loving, despite an unloving world? We were created in God's image. We should be loving because God is likewise loving. Evil may not have disappeared from the world, but that doesn't mean God is at work loving other people. When people commit evil, we just have to look at what God does do with his power and love. Once was a man who dared God to speak. His name was Jack Baines, and he asked, God, show me your love. Any questions?